Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F1 Esports video. Today I am uh, back for round 6 around the Red Bull Ring in Austria. As you can see, we're going to start on the medium compound. Uh, a lot of people around me starting on the softs. I think the only one around me starting on mediums is going to be Simon Weigang. We're on P2 on the grid behind Alvaro Caraton. Uh, we managed to get his first pole of the season. Uh, behind me, both of the Red Bulls. Uh, P3, Marcel Kiefer, P4, Frederick Rasmussen. So we're going to be under threat from them, definitely. Uh, not going to be easy to beat both of them. And uh, yeah, that is going to be a very interesting race for sure. And uh, yeah, let's see uh, what we can do on those medium compound tires in the first few laps. Uh, I know starting on the mediums around Aus Austria is very hard, as you just don't get really good traction off the line compared to other tracks. But anyway, let's head into the race. You can see Simon Weigang P5 on the mediums as it's five red lights and away we go. And straight away off the line, you can see Marcel Kiefer going around the outside of me into turn one. I need to let him go. Freddy Rasmussen trying to go around the outside as well. I get a bit of a moment coming out of turn one, which pushes him wide, but now it's gonna be almost three wide into turn three. And as you can see here, I had to back out of this, otherwise it was just simply gonna be a crash. I had to make a very quick decision if I was gonna go for it or not. And I didn't want to uh, risk losing my front wing or getting tangled up uh, going three wide into the hairpin so I had to make a very quick decision to either go for it or let them go uh, I decided to let them go because I'm on the alternate strategy I have more to lose than them uh, at the moment as if I get front wing damage I'll probably have to move on to the hearts and that's just uh, a very bad compound around this track so now drop to p5 not ideal lost three positions just in the first three corners basically so not the start that I wanted, but it doesn't always go the way uh, you want in uh, F1 Esports or in the races in general. So now uh, I just need to uh, not make mistakes, keep my composure and um, basically save my ERS because there's no way I'm going to keep up with the top four on the softs. And at the same time, um, yeah, I will probably have to work together a little bit with Simon and Brendan. Uh, in those first few laps, you can see there's a bit of overtake there, but uh, I basically straight away accepted my fate that I wasn't uh, going to stay in their DRS. Um, partly because I didn't get a good run of that hairpin when they overtook me, of course, because I had to take a really awkward line to avoid them. But um, yeah, P5 for now, we're P1 of the medium runners, and um, we need to be patient, and the race will come back to us later on uh, when we move on to the softs. Now we move on to the start of lap 7. You can see the top 4 is basically 4 seconds ahead of me at this point. So they get, they have gained quite a lot uh, by starting on softs in those opening laps as expected. Uh, ERS wise I'm on 80% more or less. And now Simon Weigang is going to go for it down the inside. I'm not going to fight it. I don't want to fight at this point. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're P2 or P1 in this train. So I'm just going to stick behind, save my tires and uh, see what how his pace is going to be. And straight away on this straight, I noticed that Simon was quite a bit higher on the wings than me. Because you could see how easily I closed that gap. I know I had DRS, but still I didn't use any overtake. And uh, yeah, I felt like he was quite high on wings. So um, I'm, I wasn't sure if it was really smart to stick behind him for too long. As... Um, he's probably quite disadvantaged by running in front and he's going to lose all of his time and it is obviously really good on tires if you're running higher downforce but you just burn out your ERS quite a lot faster and yeah also in traffic it's a lot harder to uh, to overtake of course so yeah for now I'm just going to stick behind and see how his pace is going to be in the coming laps and go from there basically you can see uh, everyone in the top 5 at the time, basically pitted, top 4 at the time, uh, apart from Marcel Kiefer, who stayed out one more lap, I think he's going to pit at the end of this lap, so pitting quite early I think so, because the softs can go like 13 laps, more or less, so that's interesting to see, uh, we are planning to pit the end of lap 12, um, earliest, and latest end of 15, as... I felt like pitting later is probably better, but you can see there's so many people on the mediums 
uh, behind me. So if they decide to go for the undercut, I will get stuck uh, behind them. And that's just not what you want. It's okay if you're stuck behind a medium uh, compound driver, but if you are on the same compound in a train, it's just going to be so hard to overtake. So we basically want to be second or first in this train. So I'm not going to let uh, Brandon pass, of course. I uh, really don't want him to get in front of me as Marcel Kiefer pits now from the lead. And I think uh, at some point both Red Bulls got through uh, or get, got past um, Alvaro Caraton, the Williams, who got pole uh, in the same corner. I think it was this corner, turn three. So, yeah, once you're behind two teammates, that's going to be really hard to overtake. And they're going to be working together, of course. But again, you see, I turn it to lean very early, but still I catch so I catch Simon so much on this little straight. So they're running quite high downforce. And every time in the middle sector, he got away from me a little bit. So um, yeah, interesting to see how he's going to do in the rest of the race with this higher downforce setup. And um, yeah, just have to keep pushing now and see um, what the other medium runners are going to do. And hope that the people who started on softs are going to come out in traffic. Because the pit lane is really short. So there's a bigger chance you come out back in traffic. The net leaders might still get into traffic. But I'll keep you updated on that. They have about one and a half seconds to the first car on mediums. So Dominic confirming that the leaders are going to get into traffic. But we're also approaching the pit window for medium to soft in basically at the end of this lap or the end of next lap as the softs can go really long uh, softs are probably the best race tire around this track hence why i feel like quite a lot of people started on it but yeah now again coming through here i felt like i was really close to simon i also hit 100 percent ers that's why i used a little bit of overtake right there and uh, i'm looking to get past him before he pits unless he decides to go really early um, because I want to basically drive out of the pits in uh, in P1 as the medium starter and then hunt down the people who started on softs. So, yeah, going through the last corner now, I think I'm going to uh, set the fastest lap I've done so far, which is a 1.57. No, I'm half a tenth off. So not my, not my PB, but still, after 11 laps still doing... Uh, the same lap time means the mediums are not really dropping off, which means we have to make moves fast uh, once I, I reach the top four. So that's going to be interesting. And uh, also need to hope I don't get into traffic from uh, people who started on mediums as well. As the pit lane loss is, I think, around 15, 16 seconds. And again, coming through here i'm having a little bit of a look simon goes wide because i had a look um and we lose a little bit of time so not ideal might try and get past simon um next lap on the main straight because see i'm really close now uh, unless he decides to pit this lap uh, i'm not sure uh, the pit entry rules were uh, basically you could take it however you want so we can just cross the white line um as you can see, Simon goes into the pits, end of lap 11, which means he has to do 14 laps on the softs. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Um, we probably going to pit at the end of this lap. A lot of people behind me pitted. So I have to respond to that to not get undercut and uh, maintain track position. Because uh, that's why I also use quite a bit of battery. I don't want to get overtaken by Brandon right now. Um, I have to use battery to maintain track position and... Uh, once you're on one lap fresher tires, it, there is the time advantage, but it's just not as much. Um, and yeah, softs are going to be dropping off quite aggressively, especially in the last two laps probably. So we need to make sure we pass all drivers before the last two laps. Because uh, the mediums don't really drop off. You can see every time I went green to sector 1, green to through sector 2. And... Yeah, the balance just stays really good on the mediums. So I'm going to come into the pits uh, this lap. And you can see I'm just going to go flat out as fast as possible. I'm quite on the limit. You can see uh, having a little bit of a moment. But yeah, I took the pit entry absolutely perfect. Um, you can see on the left rear 50%. 49 actually, I think so. So coming into the pits, no one uh, will hold me up. So I'm safe from that. Coming out ahead of Brendan again. 
and then I should rejoin around one and a half seconds behind Simon. Um, so yeah, coming through the pit exit on the limit again, of course, and coming out here, I think just over a second maybe. So that means we have done a really good uh, in-lap because the softs are, of course, around one to one and a half seconds faster. So that's really good, straight away getting DRS. Um, so that's literally amazing, as the delta on the top left is not really working properly. So it's hard to say how far Simon is ahead, but I did get DRS, so that's perfect. And now I need to get past Simon before we get to uh, Manuel Bianco Lila, who is the next driver, who has not pitted yet, uh, and also has a six second time penalty. And uh, so yeah, I want to get past Simon before we hit the traffic. And I skipped through that part as uh, James was watching uh, live timing at the time. So yeah, now getting DRS from Simon, we still have 75% ERS. Uh, don't think I'm really gonna need that to pass Simon uh, with a little bit more grip, lower wings. So coming out of this corner, only two and a half tenths behind uh, means it's gonna be an easy pass. I used a little bit of overtake um, to not hold us up going into this corner. Try to open up this corner a little bit so I can have a good exit. Simon will get the arrest now as he was just behind on the detection point. But now I used again a little bit of overtake. Uh, Simon doesn't want to battle me, I think so, because it's only gonna um, ruin both our races. I think he accepted a little bit, I was faster. But we've gained 2.5 seconds to Manuel Biancolila just on this lap. And uh, he has the arrest from Cedric Tome at the moment, but if I remember correctly, Cedric is going to come into the pits on this lap, which uh, will benefit both me and Simon, because that's going to be a more of an easy pass uh, on Manuel Biancolila. Coming through here, we're going to get DRS. You can see how much time we're gaining on this uh, fresh set of uh, soft compound tires. Um, so yeah, coming through here again, we're going to get DRS. And this should be an easy pass, um, but he is using all of his ERS. Uh, so I have to turn on the overtake as well. But we have DRS and then he squeezes his hair and then coming into the hairpin, he just decides to not turn in. Um, so yeah, that was an interesting move. I got a warning for exceeded track limits. Um, but yeah, I don't know why or what the purpose of that was because uh, he probably went the same white as Rosberg did to Hamilton. But he had a six second penalty, had no ERS left and was a pit stop down. So uh, I was a bit bamboozled at the time that he didn't get penalized for that as he literally runs off track. But um, at the time I just had to get focused again, keep my composure and push as hard as possible uh, because that cost me quite a lot of time. So easy to get frustrated. And yeah, uh, I wasn't happy, of course, as you can imagine at the time. Uh, cost me quite a lot of ERS time and... Um, Energy, let's keep it uh, like that. But now I'm gonna get DRS from Nicolas Longway ahead. Uh, I'm not gonna use any overtake anymore for the rest of this lap because I'm not gonna overtake him on this lap. Uh, that's for sure. As he has DRS from Alvaro Caraton ahead as well. So I'm just gonna have to save my ERS uh, for next lap when I actually have an opportunity to uh, pass him. And uh, I'm probably gonna get stuck behind Nicolas through the middle sector. Anyway, so I might as well save the ERS, save the fuel, cool the engine as well, save a little bit of tires, and then have a go uh, once I actually get the opportunity to. As you can see now, moving on to one lap later, uh, we are basically on Nicolas rear wing, and then we decide to take a wide entry to get a better exit of here, because he has DRS as well. He's, of course, not wanting to give up this position as... Um, you can see his rear light went flashing, which means he's out of ERS, and then around the outside, through this corner, and we get more momentum off the exit as well, we use some overtake, uh, he doesn't have the ERS to defend, and we take P4, now behind Alvaro Caraton, uh, who is not going to have DRS, so that's going to be interesting, um, I think it will be quite an easy pass as he's not going to have DRS, of course. Uh, you can see my engine getting quite hot, so I decided to put it back in lean to cool it and get an easy pass on Alvaro Caraton. Our tire still in much better shape than his old mediums versus my five, six lap old softs. And you can see Frederick Rasmussen, 2.3 seconds ahead, uh, basically working together with uh, Marcel Kiefer, his teammate. We put on um, the DRS, we're not going to use overtake because we need that later on to overtake Freddy Rasmussen and Marcel Kiefer. And 
yeah, they are just working together, uh, switching around to save up ERS. And that's not ideal, of course, because by the time I get to them, I probably have a little bit of ERS recharged, but they are probably really high on ERS as they know I'm coming on the alternate strategy. And also, by the time I get to them, my tires will be dropping off significantly. But for now, our tires are still better. You can see through this middle sector regaining all the time as we have a team radio. So Red Bulls are swapping back and forth. Expect a pretty tough fight with ERS. Yeah. So yeah, that confirms what I just said. Um, they are probably going to have the advantage with uh, ERS as they've been working together really well so far this race. They've been P1, P2 for 60-70% uh, of this race as they got Alvaro Carton quite early on in the race, I think so. So now 1.4 seconds. We're not going to get DRS on this lap, but we need it definitely next lap. So you can see he's gaining a little bit on this straight, not using any ERS, just the DRS. So I expect them to have around 70, 80, 90% by the time I arrive. And I only have around 30% that I just used a little bit to uh, make sure I get DRS next lap. So now going into the last sector, you can see I'm so close to getting DRS. I'm only 1.1 seconds behind, but I'm just going to miss out, which is crucial um, because now I won't have DRS for another lap. So that's crucial uh, for uh, basically the race. And uh, it was devastating at the time because I was pushing so hard and I just missed out on the DRS. And you can see Ray left is 36% with five laps to go. So it's uh, it's not ideal. Uh, this whole race has not been ideal. Of course, if I didn't have the incident uh, with the Alpha Tauri, um, then this would have not been an issue as I would have DRS by now. And that would have changed probably the outcome of the race. But for now, we just have to keep pushing. Um, we will get DRS for sure next lap as it's one second now going into the middle sector. And... I still have the fast lap of the race, but um, probably people with damage will pit uh, in the last uh, few laps to just take that away. You can see it's 9 tenths now, and not going to use any overtake anymore, as I'm finally going to get um, DRS, you can see. Coming through here, I've gained a little bit of time, just by the tire advantage. Going to open the DRS for the first time, and try to close this 8 to 9 tenth gap. Uh, in the coming laps and try to get past, which won't be easy because Freddy Rasmussen has DRS from his teammate as well. So it's going to be really, really hard. So coming towards the end of lap 21, this is the first time I've been really close to uh, Frederick Rasmussen in P2. You can see I'm only 1.9 tenths behind, but he has the DRS advantage. You can see he's just using the overtake on this little straight and I know he had the ERS advantage so I was just waiting for him to use all of it and uh, I decided to not use any overtake until the last lap because I knew um, my biggest opportunity would be in the last lap and looking back I probably could have sent it a few times into like this hairpin or uh, in the corner up ahead but um, yeah, I didn't feel completely comfortable. Also, I had to think about the championship, of course. And if I would if I um, would do the race again, I would definitely um, be more aggressive. Uh, but I wasn't at the time. You can see my rail left 47% now with uh, three laps to go. Uh, or just over three laps to go. And again, two and a half tenths behind going into the last sector. I feel like I still have the tire advantage compared to them. But that will fade away in the next one to two laps as uh, once those softs go over 50, 55%, uh, they really start dropping off compared to those mediums and they have a much slower drop off compared to me, uh, even though their tires are quite old as well. The softs just tend to drop off much more aggressively and now I'm almost on 50% ERS and again, Freddy using his ERS out of turn one, uh, they might have been running slightly lower wings as well, I'm not sure. But they just f seemed like um, they were be able to defend really easily. As I just check my tire where every lap, uh, I'm just trying to save my tires a little bit until the last lap because I'd already decided that I'm only going to go for it on the last lap because they had the ERS advantage, of course. So if I was going to make a move, it had to be the last lap. And uh, that's why I'm just chilling behind them a little bit. Uh, I still want to put a little bit of pressure on them, of course. 
Um, but yeah, especially the rear tires, I need to save them. So the closer I basically am to them, uh, the more uh, I scrub the front tires and the more uh, the car will stay in balance. But I don't want any wheel spin out of hairpins or get any oversteer moments through high speed corners. So again, you can see every time out of the last corner and every time out of turn one, Freddy is using that overtake to uh, be safe from me basically. And uh, I knew that already really early on. So that's why I decided to stay back and wait until the last lap. But also Marshall has have at this point had been running uh, in P1 for quite a while. And both me and Freddy were pushing, of course, quite hard. So uh, I was hoping Marshall was going to run out of ERS basically and then um, that Freddy was going to get stuck behind him and that I could go down the inside or around the outside somewhere but yeah 72% on uh, the battery now heading into almost the last sector uh, for the second last time three tenths behind Freddy we're not as fast anymore to this middle sector as before as Manuel Biancolila gets the fast lap of the race but yeah I decided to use my overtake a little bit here I was like maybe I can go for a surprise attack into the second last corner but I couldn't and uh, you can see Marshall's quite far ahead now I think he used a lot of his battery in that middle sector so now I'm going to use it down this little straight as well as uh, I want to be as close as possible to Freddy uh, going into turn one as possible but he still has so much ERS as well as I open uh, the DRS I use some overtake I decided to turn it off quite early and looking back I probably should have pushed uh, Freddy more into Marcel to uh, have a move on Freddy or force them to go side by side and again gonna use all of my overtake through here uh, as this is basically my last overtaking opportunity going into where you can see Freddy got stuck behind Marcel I go for a fake move down the outside and Freddy got distracted by that and run a little bit wide so I almost got him there but now going through this uh, middle sector again heading into the last one not much I can do anymore my tires are dropping off uh, quite aggressively at this point you can see I got a big snap of overs here I turn on the overtake for probably the last time this race and well GG to Red Bull they played it absolutely perfectly of course um, also with the third driver and coming across the line it's gonna be P3 um, behind both Red Bulls uh, still a podium uh, which I'm quite happy with of course and 15 points on the board and Alvaro Carlton P4, Nicholas Longway P5, Simon Weigang P6, Daniel Bresnay P7 um, so yeah, um, I felt like quite a good race, not one of my strongest tracks as well, so I felt like I did quite well. And um, yeah, strategy was not ideal, um, some incidents on track were not ideal as well. Um, but yeah, again, good result. My fifth podium uh, in a row, I think so, uh, or sixth podium actually. Yeah, this one was the sixth podium in a row, uh, which was the first time in F1 Esports history that someone finished on a podium six times in a row. Um, so that's a, a record broken. Um, so yeah, perfect season so far. Or not perfect, but very good season so far. And looking to um, bring the momentum into uh, the next uh, race, basically. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, see you guys next time. Ciao.